From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. At the start of this year, the Mega Aero Training Academy opened its new practical training centre. Keith Campbell paid it a visit. The Mega Aero Training Academy, or MATA, forms part of the Safamar Group. Originally set up by another company, it was taken over by Safamar some four years ago and subsequently developed as Chief Instructor Joe van der Merwer explains. And thus we started uh, MATA from that point of view, taking over an existing school that was only been in existence for about a year and take it from there and we built it up from there. We did see a need to, to do apprentice training in both mechanical and avionics. As well, we also did some people in sheet metal working and spray painting as well. You can see some of the results around here if you look around here. But we, we approached the authorities, which was TITA at the time, uh, to get an, uh, an approval with them and the CAA. We did our a projection to them. We also did a presentation to them and uh, permission was granted for us to do that. And we've been in operation now since I think about 2011, uh, working as MATA. And we've trained a number of people. The way we do it is fairly simple. We start the apprentices off in their first year doing uh, um, training firstly in, in, in theoretical aircraft uh, systems. We start them from the basic, from maths, science, or physics, and move them up to the complex stuff on, on aircraft. Then when they finish with that, the need is there to do practical training. And this is what you see around here. The aircraft around us here, the power plants, and we do physical, practical training on the guys so that they accumulate certain skills. The skills uh, uh, normally are attained after the guys do about 800 hours of uh, theoretical training and it's 400 here Andrew, eh? 400 hours of uh, 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 practical training here. That's not the end of it, they, they only schooled in their first year then. After that uh, we send them out to uh, aircraft maintenance organizations where they do uh, an amount of practical work that they have to prove by the uh, uh, filling in of a logbook. Then, once they've done that, which should take around about 18 months and 2,800 hours of practical work, then they qualify for trade test. Once they get approval from TITA for trade test, we will bring them back here, do some trade test preparation with them, do a trade, trade test, and if he passes, he's ready for the field to go out. What you see here is the practical part that we do. We also have, just outside the gate here, we have our main centre where we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six classes, classrooms, where we can take apprentices in and school them on different things. We've got all the, 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 the books uh, for them, we've got the skills of the people for them to, to, to get them around. And we're also looking at now replacing books with uh, tablets. And that I think is the next thing, because uh, uh, things are modern today, aircraft are getting modern, and we need to school them in the modern stuff as well. Other news making headlines this week, the final determination on e-tolls is in sight and ABB is bullish on its Southern African growth prospects despite a commodity pullback. Gauteng Premier David Makura recently met with representatives of civil society, political parties, labour, affected metropolitans and municipalities to elicit their feedback on the recent e-toll report before the province comes to a final determination based on the report's findings and recommendations. But one important thing I've said when I released the report that user pay principle is something that we uphold. The report itself says the user pay principle. Uh, so you, you, can't, uh, you can't change that. We require funding of the whole infrastructure on the basis of user pay principle. But how people pay, you know, and how much they pay is, uh, is the necessary dialogue and who is more severely affected by what we are introducing, particularly the poor. How are they cushioned uh, from that? The Southern African Unit of Global Power and Automation Technology Group, ABB, is optimistic that the region's growth fundamentals remain intact despite the recent fall in oil and commodity prices. As far as the market is concerned, 
We're also having a look at the Southern Africa market. That is for us a focus for growth for ABB South Africa. We've got currently about 17% of our order intake and or not order intake revenues is currently coming from outside of South Africa. That we definitely want to grow because we see much bigger growth in Southern Africa with little growth in South Africa. So definitely maintain our market share in South Africa, but increase our market share in Southern Africa. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.